Tonight on KPBS Evening Edition, San Diego is getting soaked. A wet, rainy day across the county. Some places have already seen more than an inch. From North County to Otay Mesa, we're covering the fall storm. Ambassador Sondland, welcome. Glad you're here. I'm really not glad you're here, but welcome to the fifth day of this circus. A breakthrough in the impeachment hearings. A key witness admits Ukraine was pressured to investigate President Trump's political opponents. And new punishment for Eddie Gallagher, how he might be kicked out of the seals despite President Trump getting involved. The buses can be anywhere from $600 to $1,000 per bus. That price tag in itself is screaming inequity. And the local program making it easier for all San Diego kids to learn at the beach. KPBS Evening Edition starts now. Good evening, it's Thursday, November 20th. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Maya Trabolsi. For the second straight night, rain is the big story here in San Diego. No matter where you were today, you saw it. This is video from Otay Mesa. Water was puddling up so much that streets had to be closed off. Our crews have been all over the county today and KPBS reporter Matt Hoffman is live in Claremont with a look at how the commute is shaping up right now. He also has more of our rain coverage, Matt. Yeah, Maya, we have some good news for you. Forecasters say that the worst of this storm is over. We will see some scattered showers on in through tomorrow morning. Right now we are in Claremont and no rain falling. There's been some scattered showers here. It was just pouring rain just a little bit before this live shot. If you take a look down here, we are above the 805 right near the Balboa exit. Traffic still moving pretty good out here. Uh, the rain, though, today poured all over the county, uh, hit some low-lying evils, which ended up in flooding. Here's a look at some of that today. In Spring Valley, rains completely flooded Quarry Road. Drivers looking to get through were forced to find alternative routes. One woman didn't want to wait to find a way around and brave the water. <laughs> the South Bay was also dealing with flooded roads. This portion of Otay Mesa near La Media and Airway Road was completely overtaken by water. At the beach in places like Ocean Beach, the roads were slick, but the surf wasn't big, so there wasn't any serious coastal flooding. Parts of North County also saw serious flooding. The Escondido Creek overflowed in the morning and will flood again as the rains pick up. Yeah, and while we were up there near Escondido, we saw Cal Fire water rescue teams out on patrol, ready to assist if necessary. But here looking at the 805 freeway, the CHP says they're seeing a lot of accidents out here. They're saying that they're basically drivers are just going too fast for these conditions. They're saying if it's raining, 65 miles an hour is too fast. You might lose control. And if you're going 65, going over 65, you're basically gambling. You might result in an accident. Caltrans says that they've been out here today assisting the highway patrol with these number of accidents out here. But right Right now, no rain. Traffic is moving pretty good, at least out here on the 805. We'll be back with a shorter update in the show, but here in Claremont, Matt Hoffman, KPBS News. Great. Thanks for that report, Matt, and we will check back with you a little bit later on in the show. And here's a, more on what the forecast calls for tonight. A flash flood watch is in effect for the inland valleys and mountains. Snow levels will drop to 5,000 feet and several inches are expected to fall by Thursday night. Everywhere else should expect light showers through Friday morning. We're going to have more from Matt and a closer look at our forecast later in the show. Now to day five of the impeachment hearings and what we heard this morning was the most explosive testimony yet. The ambassador to the European Union, Gordon Sondland, telling House members he and others were following the president's orders. Sondland is a key figure in the dealings with Ukraine that led to this point. Here's some of his testimony and the president's reaction. Was there a quid pro quo? As I testified previously, with regard to the requested White House call and the White House meeting, the answer is yes. Mr. Giuliani conveyed to Secretary Perry, Ambassador Volker, and others that President Trump wanted a public statement from President Zelensky committing to investigations of Burisma and the 2016 election. He had to get those two investigations if that official act was going to take place, correct? He had to announce the investigations. He didn't actually have to do them as I understood it. Ready? You have the cameras rolling? I want nothing. That's what I want from Ukraine. That's what I said. I want nothing. I said it twice. So he goes, 
He asked me the question, what do you want? I keep hearing all these things, what do you want? He finally gets me, I don't know him very well. I have not spoken to him much. This is not a man I know well. Seems like a nice guy though, but I don't know him well. He was with other candidates. He actually supported other candidates, not me, came in late. And President Trump was talking about a text Sondland sent to others in September saying the president did not want a quid pro quo. But as we heard from Sondland's testimony today, he now says otherwise. Camilla Bernal wraps up today's developments from Washington. A witness who both Republicans and Democrats say helps their case. I was acting in good faith. As a presidential appointee, I followed the directions of the president. Gordon Sundland, U.S. Ambassador to the European Union, testifying that there was a quid pro quo for Ukraine to announce investigations into President Trump's political opponents. Mr. Giuliani demanded that Ukraine make a public statement announcing the investigations of the 2016 election DNC server and Burisma. Mr. Giuliani was expressing the desires of the President of the United States. The ambassador also saying the Vice President, the Secretary of State and other top White House officials were all in the loop on what was going on with regards to Ukraine. Today's testimony uh, is among the most significant evidence to date. Republicans meanwhile highlighting what Sunland repeatedly told the committee that Trump never told him directly that security assistance was tied to the announcement of investigations. And he just said, I want nothing. I want nothing. I want no quid pro quo. President echoing this from the White House lawn. I want nothing. That's what I want from Ukraine. That's what I said. Camila Bernal, KPBS News. And KPBS has had live coverage of the impeachment hearings, and there's more to come tomorrow. You can watch, listen, or stream on all of our platforms. Coverage is expected to begin at 6 a.m. Navy Special Warfare Command will decide whether to expel Chief Eddie Gallagher and three other men from the Navy SEALs. KPBS military reporter Steve Walsh says the move creates a potential standoff with the White House. The SEALs received letters from the commander of Naval Special Warfare, Rear Admiral Colin Green, informing them that a board will decide whether to strip a total of four SEALs of their iconic trident. The move comes after President Trump restored Gallagher's rank last week, overturning a military jury. In July, Eddie Gallagher was acquitted of the most serious charges, including killing an unarmed prisoner in his custody while on a deployment in Mosul in 2017. Three other SEALs connected with the same deployment also faced being ousted. Lieutenant Jacob Portier, Lieutenant Thomas McNeil, and their commander, Lieutenant Robert Beisch. In August, Admiral Green stated in a letter, We have a problem after a series of embarrassing headlines involving the SEALs. He vowed to crack down. Portier has until December 13 to submit a statement in his defense. The board will determine whether they remain in the SEALs. Ultimately, this could lead to their resignation from the Navy. Portier's attorney, Jeremiah Sullivan, released a statement calling the process a sham. Sullivan and Gallagher's attorney have said they are appealing to the Trump administration to stop the process. Navy spokesperson Captain Tamara Lawrence issued a statement saying, Green remains focused on delivering a capable, ready, and a lethal special operations force, which includes assessing the suitability of any of its members. Steve Walsh, KPBS News. For nearly two years, you've been able to legally walk into a store and buy marijuana, but the drug is still illegal at the federal level. Now there's a push to change that. Today, the House Judiciary Committee approved a bill that would decriminalize pot and tax it. Its future is unclear. Republicans on the committee complained that it doesn't have bipartisan support. Timing for a full House vote is also unclear. A state appeals court is backing new California law that draws clear limits to who can be convicted of murder in California. KPBS investigative reporter Claire Tregesser explains what the ruling is about. Historically, a defendant in California could be charged with murder for a killing that happened during a dangerous felony, even if the defendant was not the killer, because of the so-called felony murder rule. A new law stopped those types of convictions. The law states that people can't be convicted unless they were the actual killer, helped the killer, or, quote, acted with reckless indifference to human life. 
But San Diego District Attorney Summer Steffen challenged that law, saying the felony murder rule should stay in place because the new law violates the state constitution. The 4th District Court of Appeals rejected that argument. That means people previously convicted of murder under the felony murder rule can apply for resentencing, potentially up to 800 people. One of them is Sean Khalifa, who is in Donovan State Prison, serving 25 years to life for first-degree murder. But Khalifa didn't kill anyone. Instead, when he was 15 years old, he acted as a lookout while two young men robbed a home and ended up killing the homeowner. Reached by phone on Wednesday after the appeals court ruling, Khalifa said he was ecstatic and that he hoped to be home with his mother in time for Christmas. Claire Tregesser, KPBS News. Upgrades are coming for San Diego police in the form of new helicopters. The city council has approved a $21 million plan. The money will be spent over a five-year period, phasing in four new helicopters along the way. And San Diego is considering a late-night curfew for rented electric scooters. KPBS Metro reporter Andrew Bowen says that's part of a proposed update to scooter regulations. San Diego's scooter regulations went into effect just last July, and officials are already considering changes. The scooters are popular in San Diego, though complaints of reckless riding and illegal parking of the devices have persisted. Mayor Kevin Faulkner suggests a scooter curfew between midnight and 5 a.m. could help curb the most dangerous behaviors. City Councilman Chris Ward said at a committee hearing today he'd also like data on whether the city's slow zones, where a scooter's speed is automatically reduced, are preventing crashes. Now that the eight mile an hour zone is in effect, are we seeing a significant reduction in injuries or incidents reported uh, or responses from public safety officials as well? Um, we'd like to know if this test is really working. The list of changes to the city's scooter regulations are expected to go through a legal review before making their way to the full city council for approval. Andrew Bowen, KPBS News. I'm Judy Woodruff. Tonight on the News Hour, U.S. Ambassador to the EU Gordon Sondland with explosive testimony that President Trump wanted a quid pro quo with Ukraine. Coming up at 7 after Evening Edition on KPBS. New video shows what the future may hold for the SDSU Aztecs. Last night, the university shared new renderings of its stadium plans. The video was part of a new website that went live last night. AztecStadium.com. It includes an updated timeline of the process for the Mission Valley site. This week, the San Diego City Council voted to move forward with SDSU's offer of $86 million. It includes the land and related development. KPBS is a service of SDSU. San Diego has 70 miles of coastline, but for many kids, the ocean isn't as easy to get to as you might think. KPBS education reporter Joe Hong met up with some young students at Scripps Pier who see opportunities to study the ocean as a career. No, you don't see anything. Ten-year-old Aiden Avalos is one of 40 or so students huddled in a circle on a cloudy day on a pier in La Jolla. He's peering over shoulders to get a glimpse of the plankton caught by researchers. Aiden says he's wanted to be a veterinarian all his life, but he's never been interested in the animals that live in the ocean. That changed when he saw his first tide pool. I want to be a veterinarian, a veterinarian. And um, not like two exotic animals, or just maybe like household animals, dogs, cats, birds, stuff like that. Aiden is a fifth grader at the STEAM Academy in Spring Valley. He lives less than 15 miles from the shore and comes to the beach about once a year with his family. But today, he and the other students touring the Scripps Institution of Oceanography are seeing the ocean through new eyes. What did you see in there? Oh, small. It's re really just dirty water. Yeah? yeah? No, I see little animals, like little tiny yeah, microscopic. Where do you think those come from? The ocean and like germs by growing. The students spend the day with researchers catching plankton, examining tide pools, and looking through microscopes. By the end of the day, Aiden's head is full of questions. I'm curious about how, how, how some animals live and how they grow and when they grow and like what environment they're in. It's like really interesting. Students all over San Diego County are able to have this experience thanks to the League of Extraordinary Scientists and Engineers. The nonprofit connects students from low-income schools to scientists around the county. 
The league's CEO and founder, Gene Wong, says studying the ocean shouldn't be just for the privileged. Two out of three breaths of oxygen come from plants in the ocean. And these kids in San Diego County should be at the ocean. And when you hear so often that these kids have never even been to the beach and they live in San Diego County, you know, we've all complained about it. We've all heard these stories. And so our organization, uh, League of Extraordinary Scientists with J. Craig Venture Institute and Scripps Institute of Oceanography wanted to address that directly and just bus the kids here. The league reimburses school districts for the cost of busing students to the beach. So in San Diego Unified, for instance, a bus would be like $280 to get 54 kids to the beach. But if you're getting them from, say, Poway or you're getting them from somewhere else, right, Chula Vista, whatever, the buses can be anywhere from $600 to $1,000 per bus. That price tag in itself is screaming in equity. And what I'm going to have you guys do is going to go ahead and write. John Oren is Aiden's teacher at the STEAM Academy in Spring Valley. He says the class trip to Scripps gave life to his lesson about ecosystems. I think they were able to have a concrete connection with um, a lot of the items that we study, um, being out touching the animals, um, being out um, on the pier, watching the scientists um, bring up uh, bring up their work, like bringing up the plankton. Um, that was something that we weren't able to really deliver uh, here at school. Uren says before the league, his class field trips were limited to about a 10-mile radius. Gene Wong hopes that physically bringing students to the shore is the first step in making the field of oceanography more accessible to students from historically disadvantaged communities. Having different visions on science and especially oceanography, the biggest thing on our planet, right? We need more people um, from different backgrounds to see that, to study that, and to share that information with each other. Aiden says he might consider oceanography as a career. He plans to do more research at school, but now he knows that learning about it in the classroom just isn't enough. I read about the ocean and like fish and plankton. You, it, it, coming out here makes you think it's like a whole different thing. Stories tell you one thing, this tells you another. It's really cool. Joe Hong, KPBS News. I see some stuff. Let's get more now on our big story tonight. The rain in San Diego. It's not over yet. And KPBS reporter Matt Hoffman is live in Claremont keeping an eye on traffic. He also has details on how some local shelters are expanding tonight. Matt? Yeah, Maya, you're right. The rain is not over yet, but it's not raining right now, at least in the Claremont area. We're going to see some scattered showers continuing on until tomorrow. But yeah, you're right. We are above the 805. Take a look at this. Traffic surprisingly moving very well. Now, also during this storm, the city of San Diego and the Housing Commission, they've activated their inclement weather shelter alert, meaning Father Joe's Villages are going to be sheltering about 134 people. Beds are available, extra beds. Path San Diego and Connections Housing downtown have another 30 beds. So those beds are available for people if they want to go. Those are always available during the cold weather or when it's raining. Like we said, you might see some rain on your morning commute tomorrow. Maya? Thanks so much for that report, Matt. And some parts of our area have already seen more than an inch of rain. Other parts of Southern California are seeing snow now. And this video from Wrightwood. Daji Aswad has a closer look at our forecast. The last several hours here, in fact, much of today has been on the cloudy side across the southwest, and this is due to an upper level low that's going to continue to close off. You can definitely see that circulation there spinning across portions of California, and that's why we begin bands of rain here in San Diego, some of which will continue to be on the heavy side through tonight. As of Wednesday morning, the 24 hour precipitation totals here, um, we've been seeing some decent amounts nearing three inches of rain out to Birch Hill, Big Black Mountain 2.14. Uh, inches of rain there in Goose Valley Raws, 1.87 inches. Now, closer to the coast, we haven't seen amounts this high as of yet, but there is still a decent amount of rainfall leading to flash flood watches for San Diego and continue to see that even points to the east. Now that would expire. That flash flood watch should expire late tonight, but in the meantime, showers and thunderstorms are what you have to look out for dropping down to 56 for your overnight low. Take you into that future cast starting off this evening, 7 p.m. We'll continue to see heaviest just to the south of Mount Laguna. Some heavy bouts of rain as well for San Diego and points to the south as well. Continue to see that band of moisture press further inland waves here. Then by Thursday afternoon, we'll continue to look at drier conditions, even though there 
there will still be some clouds available. So into your Thursday night, our upper level disturbance continues to press further to the east. Chilly air coming in from the north and the lots of rain going to be points towards our east out to Phoenix as well as Tucson extending even into portions of southern Utah. We will be dealing with the chance for some mudslide concerns uh, in those burn scar areas. So also something else to keep in the forefront of your minds. 65 for your high tomorrow on Oceanside topping off in the upper 60s as well for San Diego 67 in Borrego Springs and 44 in Mount Laguna with rounds of rain and shower activity. Heaviest continues to be to the east of San Diego as we head into your Thursday weekend time. Well, we're looking dry here. The pattern changes up and that what weather moves on out at the coast for Thursday high of 65 68 Friday dry conditions and temperatures warm back up as we get out of that cool pool of air. It's going to remain a bit cool here in inland areas for Thursday and Friday then into the 70s and it's trying to warm back up here as well into the mountains with highs in the 50s by Saturday. We'll be in the 70s by Saturday and saying goodbye to the wet weather here in the deserts. Reporting for KBBS News, I'm your meteorologist Dodgy Swat. Back to you. Uber is rolling out a new feature it hopes will improve safety for riders and drivers starting next month in Mexico and Brazil. Users of the ride hailing app will be allowed to opt in to have audio of their rides recorded. Drivers will also have the option. The company is planning to have the same feature in the U.S. as well, but has not said when that will be available. The e-cigarette industry took another hit today, this time from the American Medical Association. The group called for a total and immediate ban on all e-cigarette and vaping devices during a meeting in San Diego. They're taking action because of what they say is a surge in underage use, as well as the U.S. outbreak of lung illnesses that are linked to vaping. The AMA has taken aim at the industry before, seeking to ban flavors and ads. Nearly half of U.S. adults will deal with heart disease. For some, invasive surgery is needed, but new research shows it might not be the answer for everyone. Mandy Gaither has tonight's Health Minute. Those with stable heart disease may fare well on medications alone instead of having invasive procedures like stents and bypass surgeries, according to a major trial. The findings were presented at the American Heart Association's yearly conference. While chest pain and quality of life in some patients improved with invasive operations, the trial found those procedures didn't significantly change subsequent heart attacks, hospitalization for unstable chest pain or heart heart failure, resuscitation after cardiac arrest, or death from heart disease. The trial, launched in 2012, included research on more than 5,000 patients in 37 countries, which researchers say is the largest study of its kind. The study's chair estimates hundreds of millions of dollars would be saved in the U.S. if patients without symptoms forego invasive surgeries. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. The Grammy Awards nominees have a new face, and this year she leads the pack. It's been too hot living. Lizzo, who emerged as one of the hit singers of 2019, is nominated uh, eight times. That includes Record of the Year. The top categories will be awarded in a live show hosted by Alicia Keys in January. Another notable nominee, nominee is rapper Nipsey Hussle, who was shot to death in L.A. back in March. One of soccer's biggest events is returning to Southern California. Major League Soccer announced it will play its 2020 All-Star Game in L.A. at Bank of California Stadium. That's the home of LAFC. The game is set for July 29th. The MLS All-Stars will take on the best players from Mexico's top league, which is Liga MX. This will be the first MLS All-Star Game in Southern California since 2003. He's one of the most decorated champions of any sport to come out of San Diego County, and now El Cajon's Jimmy Johnson says he'll be slowing down as a NASCAR driver. I'm so thankful for 18 incredible years of racing in NASCAR. This sport has been good to me and has allowed me to do something I truly love. I showed up chasing a dream and achieve more than I ever thought possible. I'm looking forward to next season and celebrating what will be my last year as a full-time NASCAR Cup driver. I know what 
this team is capable of. And I hope 2020 is one of the best yet. And Johnson posted that video today to social media, letting his fans know that 2020 will be his final year as a full-time driver. He's won seven Cup Series with his number 48 Chevy. That's tied for the most in NASCAR history. Johnson will talk more at a press conference set for tomorrow. And before we go, KPBS wants to remind you what's in store tonight for our weather. The National Weather Service says a flash flood watch is in effect for inland valleys and mountains. Higher elevations will see snow over the next 24 hours. Elsewhere, light showers should continue through Friday morning. And a reminder as well, KPBS will have live coverage of the impeachment hearings tomorrow. You can watch, you can listen or stream on all of our platforms. Coverage is expected to begin at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. And you can find tonight's stories on our website. That's kpbs.org slash evening edition. Thank you for joining us tonight. Have a great evening.